Aloha everyone and welcome back to Kaimana Conservation. I hope you guys are excited and ready for another video. I picked another beach to film on today. It seems to be a pretty nice uh, studio since I don't have one at home at the moment. So today I'm going to be answering the number one question that I get asked as a marine biologist living and working in Hawaii. And that, believe it or not, is how did you become a marine biologist living and working in Hawaii? Uh, it is the number one thing that I get asked and I figure that would be the easiest thing to address on something like this channel. Just because I get asked so frequently, it's kind of hard to keep up. All right, so before we go any further, I just wanna put a disclaimer out there that this story I'm about to tell you is mine. Um, but that doesn't mean that it has to be yours. Just because I'm telling you what I've done doesn't mean that you have to follow it exactly. I would actually recommend, uh, if you are interested in the field of marine biology or any uh, kind of related fields, to, to make sure you go out and ask a bunch of different people how they got there because there's a bunch of different journeys. I personally have a whole bunch of marine biologist friends and colleagues that I've worked with in the past and every single story is completely different and we've all still managed to end up in the same place. So don't, don't just follow my instructions uh, to a T. Don't treat it like a checklist, just treat it like a story that you can base some potential future decisions off of. Oftentimes there are a lot of misconceptions about what it takes to be a marine biologist or what the lifestyle is like. Um, and I do want to make sure that we address that in this video as well. Living on a remote island in the middle of the Pacific uh, seems like the dream job to many people. Um, I won't lie, being that marine biologist, that it is definitely a dream lifestyle. For myself, I really enjoy this lifestyle. I hear it from my friends, family, uh, people that I encounter at work that everyone's just like, wow, you just must live the dream life. However, I do want to address that the dream lifestyle can be a little bit of a misnomer. There's a lot of misconceptions and misperceptions about marine biologists and what they do in like their daily lives. Marine biology is not an easy job. Just because it is a dream job does not mean that it is an easy job. So I just wanna get that out of the way. Becoming a marine biologist oftentimes involves many years uh, in academic education, years in volunteering, pretty grueling field work, a lot of laboratory experience, and so on. I know dozens of marine biologists and not one of them have gotten to where they are today without perseverance and hard work and persistence in that role. Um, it is not an easy feat to become a working marine biologist. It is a very competitive field. Uh, so if you know a working marine biologist, give them a pat on the back it's not uh, very easy to get to where they are. Getting started isn't necessarily easy, but I can speak from personal experience that it is extremely rewarding when all that effort and time that you spent uh, getting the publication or landing the job or uh, making that discovery, uh, it is definitely all worth it. And I personally wouldn't change a thing out of everything that I've done, including all of the little rough patches along the way. Without further ado, let's dive into how I became a marine biologist living and working in Hawaii. So I guess it's only fair that we start at the beginning. I was actually born and raised in central Illinois, which if you know anything about that area is it looks absolutely nothing like an island or an ocean environment. Uh, Illinois is landlocked on all four sides. So I didn't actually grow up with a lot of immediate ocean experience. However, what I was lucky enough to have was a family that provided a lot of travel experiences to the ocean. The closest thing I had was the Great Lakes. And if any of you guys are familiar with the Great Lakes, it is not the same. So my family actually, we did spend a lot of time traveling around the world. And one of those places that I really enjoyed was going to anywhere that involved the ocean. Anywhere that had a beach or a coastline, I was all about those trips. And because it was so dramatically different from the flatlands of Illinois, I found it to be the most interesting. It was an ecosystem that you just couldn't see where I was growing up. And I think that was that was kind of the selling point pretty early on. I had an affinity for working outdoors. I did not want a desk job, as I used to say when I was younger. Little did I know marine biology has a lot to do with desk work. Um, but I did know that I wanted to work outside with the environment and just wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do yet. Fast forward a little bit, when I moved to college, I actually went to college in Southern Virginia. It was a tiny college called Ferrum College. Um, and I got all of my preliminary scientific skills. So all of my field experience, laboratory experience, uh, really great foundational uh, education there. I actually majored in environmental sciences. I'm gonna pause and repeat. 
I majored in environmental sciences, not marine sciences. <gasps> I get a lot of gaps on that one usually. When I was a, an environmental scientist at Ferrum, my undergraduate thesis was actually on jaguars and their habitat usage in the Belizean jungle. So anyway, but no, moral of the story is that you don't have to major in marine biology in order to get a job relating to the ocean later on. So I, I've known many people in my career that didn't start out as marine biologists in their bachelors. Some of them started out as geologists, environmental scientists, uh, sustainability majors so there's all kinds of options for you and you can still find your way back to the ocean like I did. After college I needed more experience. Uh, a lot of times in a science field you can't just go straight from college into a job especially really competitive fields like marine biology. A lot of times you need either volunteer experience or internships which is what I did. So I actually uh, found an internship in the Bahamas uh, which was uh, for coral reef surveying. So it was an underwater survey right off the bat. Um, and I remember very distinctly saying to my mother, I don't think I will like this, but I'm gonna give it a shot and I can cross it off the bucket list. Verbatim, you can ask her. If you don't know her, don't ask her. But I do remember thinking like, oh, like I just don't know if I'm gonna like working in the ocean. It just sounded really rigorous and I ha only had experience on land at the time. So it was a little bit of a kind of a foreign concept to me. I was only a newly certified open water scuba diver and this internship was gonna require us to be diving two to three times a day on different surveys. And it was gonna involve a lot of work underwater. It wasn't just swimming around. It was gonna be a lot of labor underneath the surface and measuring things and uh, you know counting things out. You had your clipboards with your data sheets and I just didn't think that I could handle that. I can't believe I said that now. When I was younger, you know, at that age, I had a lot of people telling me that marine biology was a dead end. I had people very close to me just saying like, you're not gonna make any money, it's not gonna be worth it, you're, you're not gonna find a job, don't even bother pursuing it, you need to pursue something wider like environmental sciences, which is why I pursued that field in the first place. Not saying that they were being malicious or trying to crush my dreams, um, but they were being cautious. But them being cautious resulted in me feeling nervous about the field and I actually convinced myself that marine biology just wasn't right for me. Looking back on it, it was the best decision I could have made. So now you guys know I went into the Bahamas, my first marine biology internship with every expectation of not enjoying myself at all and the rest is history. Working in the Bahamas was amazing and completely pivotal. It went from thinking that marine biology was just not the role for me to 100% loving life underwater. I went from being a novice and nervous scuba diver who didn't have very many dives under her belt to a more experienced scuba diver. I got my rescue certification while I was there. I was very comfortable in the water and I could start performing these complex tasks. We usually only surveyed certain sites, uh, so you're constantly revisiting the same patch of reef over and over again, which some people may consider boring, but I actually found it to be really amazing because on that same patch you you get to see over time the local fish um, because they actually do live on very specific and small patches of reef you knew exactly who lived in your patch you knew what corals they like to hang out on you knew who what fish was transient what was just passing through and you could watch the fish start to interact with each other and with the environment around them sometimes I had to remind myself that I had to do this the survey instead of just watching the fish it was really incredible and I think the curiosity that I had while I was watching those animals really pushed me further and further into this career surveying in the Bahamas was only temporary. It was a short-term uh, internship opportunity, but it really was life-changing. I went from thinking that I wasn't ever going to work in the ocean and I had no interest in doing it, all the way to wanting to pursue marine biology as my primary career and wanting to travel the world in order to figure out what to do next. Oh, sand. So much sand. Round two. After I finished up in the Bahamas, I then moved to Fiji. I worked at a dive resort. Um, it was kind of in the middle of nowhere. Fiji is also in the middle of the nowhere, but the resort that I was working on was on an island of the island, which was only accessible by boat and only accessible during high tide. That way the boat could get over the shallow reefs that are right in front of the resort. So we're talking real isolation here. My role at this resort was to be a scuba diver that worked at the shop that was located on site. 
And the, the fun part was is I was not only acting as a diver and I got my dive master while I was there uh, right at the beginning, uh, but I was also in charge and brought in specifically to design the marine science program uh, for this resort. It was a conservation program. It was meant to educate the guests that were visiting and to inform them of what they were seeing while they were out on the water and the different uh, conservation challenges that Fiji faces. Creating and managing an educational program at this Fiji resort was another pretty pivotal moment in my life uh, and in my career. Up until that point, I had only had experience in the Atlantic Ocean and with all the marine animals that are found in the Atlantic side. Uh, if you have ever swam or dove both, or even if you just Google pictures of fish from either one, completely different species. So I not only had to create an educational program for this resort, but I also had to teach myself all the new species that, that pertain to the Pacific side instead of the Atlantic side. So that was a really fun task right off the bat. A really incredible part of creating an education program was that I realized just how long as a scientist I had been neglecting one of the most important parts of the scientific method. If you guys are familiar with the scientific method, you know that that last one that gets left out sometimes is that you have to disseminate the information to the general public. And in my careers prior and in my studies prior as a scientist, I was so scientifically minded that I only ever thought about what my research was and doing the research. I never thought about sharing my findings afterwards. That actually guided me along my current career path, which is actually more towards science communication and public relations, as opposed to just doing the science itself. After I had that light bulb moment, I realized that everything could be completely different. Crab just crawled over my feet. After I realized that sharing information with people about my knowledge of marine sciences, everything completely changed. I realized that I had the tools to help people learn and therefore to help people understand and to better protect the ocean instead of just drilling uh, research all the time. At the end of my time in Fiji, I completed my dive masters and I also completed my scuba diver instructors course. Uh, so I could now teach scuba diving. I realized while I was there that if I really wanted to pursue public education and marine sciences cohesively, I needed to get a higher level of scuba certification. So not only did I get instructor certified, but I also pursued uh, other kinds of uh, specialty certification. So I got the fish identification, coral identification, underwater naturalist, underwater photographer, which hopefully you'll see uh, the product of here in a bit, um, and, and so on. So I really wanted to focus on a future in which I could teach people about the ocean. After my role was done in Fiji, I moved to Maui, which is where we are right now, and I started working for a boat company out here that employs marine biologists to teach their guests about the ocean and its inhabitants while they're on snorkel trips and on whale watches during whale season. Just like at the dive resort, I loved the fact that I could teach people on the water about the ocean while we were face to face with what we were talking about. So in the, in the case of whale watches, I could talk about whale anatomy and physiology and behaviors while we were watching it from the boat. Same thing with the snorkel trips. I could actually point to an animal in the water and then tap the person next to me, point at it, and then uh, come out of the water and tell them what they just saw. And it is incredible to see the response on someone's face when they have that light bulb moment right in front of you. It's just, it's just not the same. There's no comparison to it. Not only did I love the work here in Maui, but I also really loved the location. So as you guys <laughs> probably figured out, I was an island hopper in my younger years, and uh, but all of the islands were always international. And that is a completely different experience, especially if you've never lived internationally before, especially if you've never roughed it living before. Um, I definitely have lived in some pretty interesting scenarios. For example, I've had showers that were just glorified PVC pipes with an on-off switch. I've washed my clothes outside in a bucket next to the hose. I've lived in places that have had outhouses, slept in several places with sleeping bags and mosquito nets. So that is just kind of a general glimpse of the, the style of life that I was living in all of those places prior to moving to Maui. So I was really loving the fact that I've got some luxuries out here, like hot water, Hot water is a luxury, believe me. Um, I can get to the grocery store in a couple minutes as opposed to three hours down a bumpy road. It was the perfect blend of a Pacific tropical island and uh, kind of North American comforts. So there were a lot of changes and I was really loving this new like life of luxury when I moved to Maui. One thing that was 
related to Maui that was not as great as the other places was the cost of living. It is super expensive to live in Hawaii. I found out pretty early on that living in Maui just wasn't going to be possible on the salary that I was working on. So I had to make a really difficult decision. I felt like I had found my new home. I love this island so much. And I knew that I had to leave it and go get a higher education. So unfortunately, I left Maui for two years um, after finding my, my dream home, which was a bummer. Um, but it was worth it in the long run. It wasn't all bad. Don't let me convince you it was terrible. I got accepted for my master's in Sydney, Australia. And it took me two and a half years to finish up my, my schooling in Australia. I got my master's in marine sciences and management. I studied crown of thorns starfish, which we'll save for another episode. That'll be a whole nother slew of fun information for you. But while I was living in Australia, I did end up using pretty much my entire life savings to afford tuition. So I afforded everything else by working for a whale watching company out of Sydney Harbor. Um, and I spent a majority of my free time out there working for this whale watching company. So two and a half years after I left Maui, I finally was able to return to my home um, and I got a job at the Maui Ocean Center. The Maui Ocean Center is an aquarium and education center here uh, in central Maui. And I got a job as the head naturalist and shortly after as the education director. So we, uh, as a, a team, we do all of the public education at the Ocean Center. So I really enjoy working at the Maui Ocean Center. It's a really unique location where people can see all of the local and endemic species that are found here in Hawaii and it's accessible to everyone. Not everybody can get into the water and go see these animals in the wild. All right guys, well it's getting a little bit dark. I chose to film during sunset. Probably not my smartest move. Sunrise is definitely better. Uh, so I'll go ahead and end this here. I know there's probably a lot of things that I've left out. I'm sure if any of my friends watch this, they will definitely call me out on it. Uh, but if you have any additional questions about, you know, what it's like in the life of a marine biologist or how I became, if you want me to kind of fluff out any of the details, just leave it in the little comment section below and I'll be happy to get back with you. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. Sorry if you had to squint in order to see me in those last couple minutes of the video. Uh, hopefully uh, I will see you next time. Mahalo.